Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I decided to sit down and think about what would happen if we created archetypes representing each of the 16 personality types in the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Before we get into that, let's talk about what archetypes are. Archetypes are eternalized images that exist in the human unconscious. Basically, because we have existed for millions and millions of years, humans have exchanged stories and ideas with each other for a very long time. And many of those ideas have come to be ingrained in our very DNA, meaning that these kind of characters and stories are immediately recognizable to anyone once you start talking about it. We all know of and can think of people that represent these kind of archetypes and we can all recognize these kind of archetypes across time and culture. These people have always been around. They exist in all cult countries, they exist in all times of the world and yeah, they continue to exist today. And so as our stories grow and evolve, archetypes might change and slightly adjust over time but it takes a very long time to really change how we look at and perceive these kind of ideas because they are so very basal to human thought and human ideas and human language. What I want to do today is I want to understand how the 16 personalities, the different personality types, can relate to and connect to these archetypes. Do we all have one unique archetype that represents us more than any other? Can any person be divided and categorized into a specific story or a specific myth or a specific human legend? And if so, what is your unique archetype? Let's find out that now. Now, I couldn't just come up with one archetype, however, and so instead I came up with four of them, and you get to pick which of these four archetypes that you feel fit you the most. Let's start with archetype number one, NP the rebel. The rebel is the representative of being somebody that goes against the normal order of things. The rebel represents freedom, innovation, and non-conformity, going your own way, going for what you want and what you think is right and challenging conventions. And so it's a perfect representation of any intuitive and perceiving personality type. Feeling perceivers can be represented by the bard. The bard representing self-expression, empathy, inspiration, and the ability to put words and music and art to represent who you are and to express yourself and your innermost feelings through nuanced forms of culture. And this, to me, is the perfect example of any feeling and perceiving type. Introverted intuitives might find themselves relating to the sage. The sage representing the insight and wisdom and reflection of introversion and intuition. The healer represents compassion, understanding and harmony. And so it represents going inside, introspecting and reflecting on yourself to figure out what it is that you feel and learning to resolve personal struggles through self-reflection and, and counseling. This represents any introverted and feeling type. Extroverted intuition could be described as the inventor, the person that comes up with the new ideas, the ingenious, the curious and the progressive oriented extroverted and intuitive types. Feeler and judging types can be represented by the knights. They represent honor and integrity and ethics, doing the right thing even if it's difficult for you, setting aside your personal desires for what's best for the group and the culture and tribe. It's typical for feeling and judging types. Intuition and judging can be described as the magician, and so representing vision, originality, and the ability to predict the future, intuitive and judging types are able to plot and plan ahead and to do unconventional, unheard of things by studying, by thinking, and by coming up with original ways to solve problems. The extroverted and feeling types can be represented by the every person able to hold many faces in the society, to change rules, to shapeshift, to connect with anyone, to be relatable, to communicate with others, to connect with others, and to be authentic. The sensing and judging types can be represented by the protectors, the people that hold up the laws of society. They represent stability, reliability, and structure, the opposite of the rebels. 
The introverted and sensing types can be called the builders. The builders are those that represent craftsmanship, mastery and precision, the ability to create your own things and to do so predictably over time to master how something works and to be able to follow that process to create amazing things. The sensing and perceiving types can be said to represent the art of being a fighter, somebody that fights for something, somebody that's resilient, tough, strength, endurance, those are feats of sensing and perceiving types. Extroverted and sensing types can be called explorers or adventurers. They represent adventure, experience and enjoyment of life as it is in the here and now. Introverted and thinking types could be called the scientists. They represent critical thinking, precision and certainty. Extroverted and thinking types could be described as the pirates, representing ambition, resourcefulness, and boldness. And in thinking and judging types could be called the rulers, representing power, control, and judgment. Finally, thinking and perceiving types could be called the traders, representing being competitive, persuasive, and versatile. Being able to see pros and cons, being able to make the best deal, being able to be achievement oriented and cunning when dealing with people. So those are the 16 personalities as archetypes. Which archetype did you identify with the most? Now you might be wondering why I chose the archetypes that I did. For example, why would intuition and perceiving produce somebody that was rebellious? Well, first and foremost, when intuition is rebellious and perceiving in its temperament, it's flexible. It goes against what's happening around it. It reacts to its surroundings and it adapts and it thinks of an interactive response or a way to move in relation to what's happening around it. And because intuition is unconventional and original in its nature, what is going to be produced, the response that's going to come up is going to be more original and rebellious. For example, on the other hand, if you take, for example, the feeling and judging type, judging in its nature is, tends to be about order and goals and about discipline and focus towards something. And because feeling in this uh, time is judging in its nature, the person that is feeling and judging is going to most likely seek to be emotionally restrained and composed. They're going to control how they relate to and deal with their emotions to try to deal with their emotions in a productive and fruitful manner. They will talk about emotional stoicism, self-control, and using your emotions and values to make the world a better place. So focusing on thinking of how to use their feelings for a positive cause. Four. On that matter, why would extroverted feeling produce an every person? Well, if you look at it, extroversion in its nature is something that is about interacting with the environment in an assertive, dominating and initiative rich way. And so taking initiative to interact with people, emotions, and what's happening around them, they'll seek to relate to and connect with you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. What's your name? Trying to get to know other people that every person will take on the face of any individual. And that's, of course, a superpower. On the other hand, the introverted thinking. Why would introverted thinking produce a scientist? Well, if you think about it, introversion is something more methodical, something more modest, something more reflect. And it's also something that has more to do with self-restraint, self-control. And in many ways, it's about being somebody that thinks critically about the world. Somebody that prioritizes, thinks what's efficient, what's smart, what's the best course of action here. It asks questions. It wonders, why does this work this way and how could it work better, right? And it's big picture oriented. It zooms out. Instead of just thinking of what's happening right now, it thinks, why does it happen? And does this happen on a larger scale of the world? And how can I use that? And yeah, that allows you to gain a rich understanding of the world. So yeah, that was my thought process for the archetypes. I hope that made things a bit more clear to you. Now, the person who came up with archetypes is Carl Jung, the legendary psychologist. Now, if you Google Jungian archetypes today, you'll actually end up getting the 12 Jungian archetypes. And that actually has nothing to do with Carl Jung. Confusing, right? Well, the 12 Jungian archetypes that are popularly known today were actually created by a marketing guy. And he thought he could use the idea of archetypes as 
created by Carl Jung, but he came up with his own interpretation of 12 different archetypes that he saw and used them to discuss how different companies might choose to market their products. For example, Innocent might choose to market their use as fresh and pure, and so they would use the archetype of the Innocent. The way I use archetypes is more broad. I think archetypes are something you can encounter in your dreams and in your stories and in movies and in all kinds of different theories. And you can come up with any kind of archetype and you can see and can name and conceptualize any kind of archetype that it will pull into and it will connect most likely to some existing work of fiction or some typical trope. What we know today when it comes to writing fantasy or science fiction, for example, is that we're actually not really inventing something completely original. We are constantly borrowing from each other's worlds and stories, and what we end up with is new iteration or new way of writing this same old story. One person you can study if you want to learn more about archetypes is Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell is known for the idea of the hero's journey and the idea, the idea that all stories are the same and follow the same script. Now, that's not necessarily true. Not all movies have to follow this specific script, but you certainly recognize this in a modern Disney movie today. The Disney company certainly memorized the idea of the hero's journey to a T and they took it and followed it point by point to create their own formula of how to make an awesome movie. And certainly their movies are undeniably popular today. If you want to know more about your personality type, I recommend taking my personality test at personalitopia.com. And you can always check out patreon.com slash ericdor for learning about yourself and for connecting more with your own inner world. Thank you for watching.